Land refills are the commonest and most obvious way of getting rid of solid wastes because they are cheaper and take a short time to get rid of it. But they have drawbacks unlike other methods. Take for example, composting. This method has multiple advantages over land filling. Composting is able to return much needed organic matter back to the soil thereby preventing land degradation and significantly reducing methane gas emissions into the environment. Currently, the World Bank is funding compost like this one in Mokono district. The projects in several urban areas are implemented by NEMA. It has both air collection and composting area. All the garbage that is tracked in is first measured for volume and amounts. This is vital to help in calculating the carbon credits that will accumulate after the composting process. Thereafter, the plastics, ceramics and glass are separated from the organic waste and removed because they cannot decompose. Uh, the plastics, we, at the moment we are recycling, we are using, we are brought the uh, um, plastic recycling industry, Nakawa. It is helping us in dealing with plastics. Then glass, we are yet to get uh, somebody who is willing and really interested in recycling glass. The organic waste is then uploaded by a forklift into heaps three meters high, after which water is poured in to facilitate the process of composting. The waste is flipped and turned inside out at least once a week. This is a window base where all the garbage is collected and considering that the process used is aerobic which requires a lot of oxygen among other requirements, the garbage is monitored here to ensure that the final product is quite good. The oxygen levels and temperature in the decomposing heaps are constantly monitored to ensure that they do not exceed 70 degrees Celsius. At the, at the time when oxygen is deficient, that's when an early condition is set in and that's what we try to avoid. Then the temperature, temperature helps us to know at what level are the microorganisms operating optimally. If, if they reach that optimum level, then the conditions are favorable. But if they are, it exceeds 70 degrees centigrade, the conditions are not favorable. As the waste is moved from one window to another, it has to be constantly sorted and changed accordingly after a week. The leachate from the waste is collected into a tank and is poured back to minimize the foul smell and keep away scavenging birds like the marabou stocks. After a month, the waste is finally sieved to produce compost. Two types of compost are derived, namely fine and coarse, both ready for use. However, compost is not manure. What compost does is to improve the structure of the soil to be able to release the right nutrients at the right time, the right amounts, and even the soil condition to be able to hold water. It is not easy to generate sufficient compost in a number of areas in Uganda due to low levels of waste collection with most sites collecting only 40 tons per day. The market for compost is also not readily available. I, we are being challenged in Fort Porto where say uh, historically the soils are very fertile and so there is a huge compost uh, that is uh, generated but without market. There are also concerns from some farmers where the compost produced this way might not contain elements of metal. The compost, however, contains nitrogen and phosphorus, which most fertilizers have, considering the sorting is done by hand. You know, in everything that you produce, even what you eat on a daily basis, the levels are at a certain, I mean, the heavy metals are at a certain level. But as long as they don't go beyond the international, international levels, they are okay. So ours are okay. The Mukono example goes to show that many urban areas of Uganda could only design and implement such projects. Once well executed and planned, they can be financially sustainable from the sale of compost and carbon credits. It is estimated 
that the solid waste compost system can trap an estimated 750,000 tons of carbon dioxide over the next 10 years. Craig Kadoda, NTV, Ecotalk. Thank <laughs> you.